Hi there, dear friends, my name is Artur Ceroński. Today I'd like to tell you a few things connected with walking with God and to be more precise, I want to focus on the principles of living with God. In the Bible, we can read a scripture from the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 1 to 2, it goes like this. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. We can see here six elements, which are really the principles, the basics of Christianity. I want us to go through these six elements and listen to God's truth about them. Uh, I am going to discuss in detail each principle. That is why I'm going to prepare six separate teachings, each teaching about one principle. I want you to treat these teachings as one whole message, as it is going to be a real interpretation of the elementary principles of Christ. Today we're going to talk about the first principles. The principle is repentance from dead works. We have to ask ourselves, what is a dead work? When we read the original text, we can see that the word, word dead is the word necro. It means something that is without life in it. It's dead, it's not made alive. So works that are not made alive. So how can we understand it? It means that before we are born again, listen carefully, it is very important, all, all our views, all our opinions were dead. Do you understand me? All of your views were dead. Whatever your opinion was, your perspective on something, it was dead. Maybe some of those things were based on some sort of truth. But it doesn't matter. Look, for example, mushrooms. All mushrooms in the forest are real, are true, but not of them are edible. You wouldn't say that the mushrooms in the forest are unreal, for example. So people, and the same with our opinions, yeah? So people come to me and say, oh, it was real, what I felt was real. It was honest, but let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if something was honest in your life or not before you came to Jesus. It doesn't matter if something was real or honest. It doesn't matter if it was according to some system you lived in. It doesn't matter if it was good or bad. So it was dead. It was necros. Every opinion, every view, every idea, every concept was dead in your life because you were dead. But when you met Jesus and invited you into your life, you became alive. And now you have to start to battle against the old ways of thinking in you. It doesn't matter if they were good or bad. When I give my life to Jesus, I admitted that my life before him was a mistake. I admitted and confessed my life was wrong. I'm not talking only about my mistakes. All my life was wrong. Also the good things in my life, it was one big mistake. So the word works has a wide meaning, you understand. It is works, actions, products, efforts, benefits, profits. So. The entire system of your uh, opinions, of your thoughts, mentality, your views, actions, it's all a dead system. It is necros. Would you repeat after me? In the name of Jesus, I proclaim that all my opinions that I had before I met Jesus as the Lord and Savior were dead. Amen.
I want you to understand this thing. I don't want you to say, oh, I was brought up this way. My experience tells me that. Or this is the way I am because of my past. Everything I am is what I experienced and I have to be the way I am. No. What's more, I don't want you to reject only the bad thoughts, bad views or actions from your past. No, I want you to reject all of your thoughts, all of them. You have to agree that all of your views and opinions were Zerper's views. I want you to admit that the, all the old things are passed away. All things have become new. Even if your entire mind is soaked with the old thoughts, it doesn't matter. Old things have passed away. You get it? It passed away. It's gone. Let's say someone used to be a great musician. His life was a successful, was successful as a musician. Um, then he gives his life to Jesus. This person thinks, I used to be a good musician, so now, as a new creation, I'm going to play in worship and praise God with my talents. No, you know nothing about worshiping God. I'm not saying you can't sing or play. You can, you can play beautifully different instruments. You can have a beautiful voice and sing wonderfully, but you have to understand that all the things you used to do in your old life are the result of your old ways of thinking and your professional career as well. There is no life in it. It is all dead. It's not fit to be used in the kingdom of God. If you can understand it, then you won't be able to come to God and find a meaning of what a real worship is. If you, if you won't understand it, you'll come to me and explain and convince me that you are a professional musician. But you know what? I don't care. What you have to be is a worshiper, not a musician. There's a huge difference between someone who's a musician and someone who is a worshipper. The same way, it's, there's a huge difference between someone who, who used to be a great speaker in the old life and someone who is an anointed preacher. You could be a fantastic orator. You could be educated and have fantastic skills. It's great. Maybe you were someone who was really good at convincing people to do different things and you were excellent at encouraging them. Apollos was like that. We can read about him in the Bible. But there was a point in his life when the believers told him and explained to him the most basic things of God. Initially, he was trying to lead people to Christ using his intellectual abilities, and it didn't work. He wasn't successful. And today, there are many people who try to convince others to believe in Jesus intellectually. For example, they wear t-shirts with a inscription saying, I'm not ashamed of Jesus, or I can pray for you. It's all rubbish. It doesn't work this way. Old things are dead. Old things are necros. So we are setting up creative foundation of changing our mind to be able to move away all the work, deeds, actions, behaviors prophets, everything that was dead. They are all dead. They're not alive. Then we, when we read the, the, the scripture, my friends, we can see a phrase, let us go on unto perfection, unto greater things. So we can start about perfection only if we have understood the most basic things. So only if the foundation is solid. So in order to, for, to, uh, to reach perfection and to go on to greater things, you have to deal with the principles, which means you have to repent from the dead works and old ways of thinking. I can see people in churches and ministries who want to go on to perfection. They are talking about it. They are looking for deeper things. But when we meet such a person and he, he or she is new in our church and we talk to him or her, we often see that they don't understand the most basic things. They want to run somewhere into new places. But I say, hey, stop. Don't rush like a crazy person. First, you need to repent from the old deeds. It's time to change your thinking. Where do you want to run without foundation, without basic things? Very often I talk to people who go to gym, they ask me, how long does it take me to look good, to be strong and fit? I tell them that the first, you need to prepare your muscles to build them, and that usually takes two years. And their surprises faces say, how long? 
I answer two years. You have to prepare your muscles, joints. You need. You'll teach your brain to think differently. Until your new brain, your brain is not cooperating with you.、Uh, it, nothing will change. Your brain used to whisper: sleep a bit longer, lie down, sit down, don't go anywhere, eat a little bit more, eat some donuts before going to sleep. But from now on, you're going to build a new foundation and move away your own ways of thinking. This is how it works. Let's go to Hebrews nine fourteen. It says, "How much more shall the blood of Christ?" Who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And you have to understand first that you are given the power today to knock down the old and dead ways of thinking. You can do it today, day by day, hour after hour, second after second. Today you have the power to do it. You have. You weren't given the power to wait for for it. You have got that power in your spirit, and you can get it from there. You can use it. Romans twelve verses one to two says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service." And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we can see that the will of God becomes clear to us when we regularly take authority over the dead works and ways of thinking. We are shown how to do it. First, we are told to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. What does it really mean? If you are born again of the Holy Spirit, it's time for you to decide that your body, your your psyche, and your physical body that you can see every day in the mirror, all of you, your entire person belongs to God. And ought to serve him. In which aspects? In everything. Listen to me. In everything. In the past. In the past, before you were born again, you had your breakfast for yourself because you served your old nature. Your ego was your master, and your ego obeyed the devil. But when you became a new creation, born again, your old nature died. The devil got a facer. He let your nature go, and it died. A new nature was created in you, the nature of Christ. So now, as a new creation, you have your breakfast for whom? For God. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Whatever you do, you do it for God. You have a shower. You take a shower for God. You get married. You get married for God. When you preach the gospel, you preach it for God. You buy clothes. You buy them for God. If you bring up your children, you bring them up for God. Do you understand it? This is what we call the beginning. This is how you sacrifice your body and your mind. So now, whatever you do, it is not for you anymore. Everything is for God. If you make love to your husband or wife, you do it for God. Every single thing you do, you do it for God. If you build your house, you build it for God. If you make friends, you make it for you make them from for God. And if you do all that for God, you have to consider His desires. You have to carefully read His Word, look into your spirit, because now He lives there, and become familiar with His desires. Do you know what sin is? 
The sin is harmatea. In Greek, it means a mistake. Briefly speaking, each time you don't each time you don't sacrifice your body and your mind, you make a mistake. Okay? This is problematic. You know, you have to cleanse yourself in the blood of Jesus. It is given for us so we can use it. But first, you need to admit that the mistake you made is a sin. You say, I'm sorry, Lord, I sinned against you in my soul and in my body, and I did not sacrifice this or that element of my life. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this word world. Listen, do not be conformed to this world. Do you know how to break the old ways of thinking which were created in us by living in this world? By offering up our bodies to Him while we are still alive. Yes, very often you have to violate your line of thinking. This is how you're going to eliminate them. You have to violate them. You have to be violent. You have to attack them. Since the days of the John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven has been under attack. And the violent people are taking hold of it. So, as a result of bringing the old ways down, of thinking down, our mind is renewed and our way of thinking is completely changed, transformed. Something old is going away and something new is emerging. Spiritual reality cannot be empty, cannot be void. So, if something old disappears, something new shows up. There is a change. How to achieve this change? Well, I'll give you five tips. First, build trust to God by living a life of prayer. A life of prayer based on worship. How do you do it in practice? Your life is a prayer. Do you get me, my friend? Start to look at your way, your life in this way. Your life is a prayer. If you still know very little about prayer, listen to my teachings on prayer, on this topic. You can find them on my YouTube channel, Artur Ceroński. Find all the information you can about what prayer is and then expand your prayer life. Remember, a prayer life is a life of worship, of praise, of thanksgiving, of showing your appreciation to God. By, by doing so, you define His greatness, His goodness, His holiness, otherness than everything around us. So that was the first thing. Now, second, studying the Word of God. First of all, reading and studying the New Covenant. Remember, my friends, when you study the Bible, study everything in the light of the New Covenant. I always repeat, the Old Testament was written by dead people, dead in the Spirit, for people who are dead in their spirit. The Old Testament can be used only if you study it in the light of the New Covenant, because you are a part of, of a New Covenant. So we should study the Bible in the light of the New Covenant by paying special attention to, first, grace. You consider grace, you look for grace, you look for all information about grace, you think about grace. And secondly, faith. Then, th third, your identity, who you are in Christ, because you have to find out who you really are in the light of God's word. Then fourth, the devil's defeat. And fifth, spiritual principles revealed to us by God and his word. So we study the Word of God on those five basic levels. First, grace. Second, faith. Third, your identity in Christ. Fourth, devil's defeat. Fifth, spiritual principles. These are the, the levels. So stop reading the Bible looking for some strange things. Stop looking for information predicting the end of the world. Stop thinking about such silly things why do you why do you care to know what is the date of the end of the world i don't care at all about this you know why i'll tell you because 
I've learned that I'm not going to be here when this is going to happen. So I'm going to be happily, happily jumping on the heavenly meadows like a little uh, ram shorn the sheep. I'm going to be very happily running around heavenly meadows like like him, you know. I will be in the presence of God. I will not be here. I will not be worrying about anything. By his power, I will change my earthly body and I will be I will receive a glorious body, but it's not time to talk about it right now. So study the word of God, having these five elements in your mind, grace, faith, your identity in Christ, the devil's defeat, and getting to know spiritual principles. And now the third thing is uh, being in the community, in a good church, sharing your lives together. I'm not talking about the church which doesn't preach the truth the real truth and full gospel of church. This is, uh, I'm not talking about a church that's asleep. I'm talking about a place where you can listen to true teachings and have a relationship of love with God's people. So don't think you'll be fine without it. Don't think you don't need it. The internet won't give you those things. You cannot develop without the community of God's people. Of course, you can use the internet to find some nice teachings, of course, but the internet will never replace the relationship of love and won't replace the true teaching preached to your life. So you have to be a part of a healthy church. And the last thing is risking, taking a risk by faith, acting upon the three previous points so if you want to move away all the dead works you have to build a relationship of trust with god that is a life of prayer we have to study the word of god the five elements we've talked about we have to be in a healthy church and we have to act and walk by faith friends these are crucial matters we are talking here about the elementary principles of Christ. If the foundation isn't solid, the house we are building will not stand. It shall collapse, simply collapse. I want you to understand these simple things. I would like us to pray now. Pray with me. Father God, I want to thank you that your Holy Spirit lives in me. Thank you that I am your temple, that I am holy and perfect in my spirit. Father, thank you that my soul, my psyche is being changed thanks to your power that you placed in my spirit. Father, I now submit my soul to you. I now move away all the dead works, I reject them and I break every spiritual stronghold of dead works. I bind demonic forces which supported dead works in my life. I renounce all the dead works. Holy Spirit, I open up to your leading. Guide me, please. I want your changes in my mind. I am new in my spirit, and now I implement new spiritual thing into my mind, into my emotions and my decisions. In the name of Jesus, amen.